Eight Fingers by Ali Hamandi Narrated by Otis Jiry It had only been a few moments after I stood at the entrance of the rusted yet luxuriously inscribed steel door that it went swinging violently inwards and a hand shot from the dark entrance and clenched my throat. I was used to these things. I often had lucid dreams that I could not control, yet could only escape by reaching some sort of goal that my wretched subconscious felt necessary that I do. It was a sleeping disorder known as subconsciously dominant lucid dreaming, or SDLD for short, and I am only one of 19 people to be diagnosed with this disorder. Although the dreams may be scary, they provide me with a huge adrenaline rush that keeps me excited for a few minutes after I've awoken into real life. Quite unfortunately, there is a side effect. Extreme dreams in which physical pain is inflicted upon me often end up reflecting themselves in the form of fatigue, soreness, bruising, or even internal bleeding after I've awakened. This dream, it seems, would provide a wildly different outcome. The vicious nails growing out of the hand injected themselves into my throat before I could react. I felt no pain, but I knew it would hurt horribly when I awoke. The nails were extremely long and were composed of a peculiar material more similar to iron than dead skin, but there was something even more peculiar about them, There were eight nails that had dug themselves into my throat, but there was only one hand. As one would expect, the enormous amount of blood that had been spewed out of my neck plastered my face red and impaired my vision temporarily. This gave the person, or thing, behind this attack an opening to deliver a punch to my stomach, sending me yards away from the door and the giant labyrinth it held the entrance to. Having landed on my back, I decided to remain where I was for some time. I felt no pain, no hunger, no tiredness, and hours in lucid dreaming are only a few minutes in the real world. It might as well have been my ideal life with the exception of that thing. After deciding it was about time for me to get out of there, I stood up and began making my way back to the entrance. That's odd, I thought to myself. I vividly recalled the door actually being the entrance to a grand building, one similar to the Taj Mahal. But it seems that the building was no more. The door just stood there. Regardless, I made my way back to the door and opened it. Surprisingly, it led somewhere. I walked around the door to see if the entryway I saw on the front side would be present on the other. It wasn't. I made my way back to the front of the door and walked through. The environment had completely changed, as if I had stepped through a portal. What once was an endless white plain with white skies now changed to a dismantled realm. The sky was a bizarre purple, and there was no floor. There were only platforms made of stone that were suspended in midair, and I was on one of them. Separated only by a few feet, I jumped over to the nearest stone platform. This one was much larger and wasn't completely flat. It was also void of any structure or remarkable features, so I made my way to the next one. The next platform, to my surprise, wasn't made out of stone. It looked like stone, but felt like a very soft mattress. My feet sunk into the platform as I landed and I lost my footing. Now, unbalanced and at the edge of the platform, I saw something out of the corner of my left eye, a large, shadowy figure quickly heading towards me. Before I had a chance to react, I was punched by the same eight-fingered creature and was sent flying off the platform and into the abyss. I thought it was the abyss, at least. A few seconds later, I smashed into the ground, making a sickening thud as I landed. Oh, thank God I can't feel things in here, I thought. Although I knew my entire backside would be bruised when I woke up, now I found myself standing in a hallway, with the exception of a roof, of course. The walls on either side 
glowed a dim white and were roughly double my height, with nowhere else to go again trudging forward. As I rounded the end of the hallway, it became apparent to me that this wasn't a hallway, but a maze. From where I stood, there was a pathway to the back of left and right of me. I decided to take a right. The pathway I took later diverged into two other pathways, one to the left and the other slightly ahead of the right. I took another right. This new pathway was a dead end, so I made my way back to the earlier pathway and took a left. After spending a few hours doing more turn-making, I eventually made it to a dead end with blood splatter on the walls. Trippy, I thought. I made sure I didn't double back, and there was a large pool of blood where I would have landed had this been where I started. Assuming this was where I started, I walked back to where the pathway had originally split to the left and right. Having taken the right last time, I decided to take a left. Surprisingly, this pathway didn't have any other pathways protruding from it. It simply seemed to keep me going in a straight path. Eventually, after walking for about five minutes or so, the pathway began curving in a zigzag fashion and heading upwards, unlike the rest of the labyrinth I've seen, which mostly consisted of right angles and level pathways. Now I'm getting somewhere. Besides this anomaly, my journey on this pathway was uneventful. However, I eventually reached a well-like structure suspended in mid-air, It seemed this was a dead end, too. I was disappointed, because that meant I'd have to walk all the way back and try my luck with the right pathway again. Although I have no physical feelings while dreaming, I decided I'd rest here for a while. I thought I could take in the atmosphere that my mind had so masterfully created. And so I sat against the well and looked at no place in particular. Oddly, I began sensing heat being emitted from the well and onto my back. This was the first time I had such a feeling in a lucid dream, so I quickly stood up and examined the inside of the well. What I once thought was normal water was now glowing a bright yellow, and vapor seemed to be rising from it. I was afraid to put my hand in there. If I could feel the heat from outside the well, how bad would my hand burn if I were to feel the water? But before I could make up my mind on whether or not I should take the risk, a hand rose from the well, grasping my neck with such ferocity, I was sure it was the same figure that attacked me at the beginning of the dream. This time, though, it was worse. I actually felt the pain, and it was like nothing I've ever felt before. All eight fingers were locked, becoming only progressively stronger as I attempted to pull the hand off my neck. In the midst of all the chaos, I was able to discern that it was a left hand, but that was all I was able to notice before the creature's hand shattered my neck, jolting me back into reality. I awoke, startled and barely able to breathe. Less than a second later, I realized that it wasn't adrenaline that impeded my breathing, but the same hand that had haunted my dream. I was bewildered. But the dream was so supposed to be over. Never before, in all my previous 37 lucid dreams of this kind, had I experienced an inception-type dream where I awoke from a dream into another. Then again, I did experience pain within the one I had just awoken from. Having all these thoughts, within a few milliseconds, my next course of action was to fight off the hand, as it seemed I could feel pain in this dream too. There was no other hand attacking me, nor was there a creature that the hand was attached to. I immediately began punching the left demonic hand with my right one, but as expected, this produced no result. I attempted to use my right hand to assist my other one, but to no result either. It felt as if the command pulses being fired from my brain to my right arm never reached their destination. Only a few seconds later, I actually decided to follow the hand to see where it came from, in hopes of perhaps getting to see what would most likely become my end in this dream. Only then did I realize what lay behind this attack. It was my very own left arm, 
but now in the same inhuman form, with the same eight fingers that had attacked me in my previous dream. I was struck with a rush of adrenaline and fear I've never felt, a rush strong enough to fully drown out my pain. It was a good thing the adrenaline did so, because I did not want to experience the pain of my neck being shattered again, as my out-of-control fist squeezed with all its might. Unfortunately, this time, there was no dream for me to wake up from.